Welcome back. Um, well, what are we doing today? I'll have to start us off properly with a poem. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. Let there be no reason the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. So, we're blowing things up. If only... But, that is a nice little poem for those of you who celebrate Guy Fawkes Day that's probably been embedded into you, into you since childhood. But for us stupid Yankees, we don't quite understand that just yet, except for a little film that the Wachowskis brought us called V for Vendetta. Based on a comic book series of the same name. By the ever-brilliant Alan Moore. Who also brought us Watchmen. So, Alan Moore is known for deconstructing social blah blah blah, you're, you know the drill. Anyway. Yeah. Heroes are really villains, villains are really heroes. Gray morality. Anyway. But, for those of you who probably aren't allowed to go running around lighting things on fire, or blowing shit up, we have a wonderful substitute for you. Or if you're just a member of 4chan, then you can probably get a bunch of your friends together and just do a viewing party. But we're going to give you the top ten. Ten? Ten. I found us ten. Top ten anarchist films to watch, especially on Guy Fox Day. All right, well... Let's see. To get us started off, V for Vendetta. Yeah, why not? I mean, it 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 sets the bar, doesn't it? Yeah, we're I mean we're not ranking these in an, any kind of order, are we? Uh, well, I mean, I'm. Uh, I mean, obviously this is the one to start off with because well, it is the only movie. Well, it, it's it's an excellent gateway. It's also clearly based around Guy Fox things. Oh yeah. Anarchist. Well. While we're on the subject, um, what criteria does the movie have to meet to be on this list? Well, along the lines of this, true anarchy should actually be displayed at some okay. point. And, and not by cosmic happenstance. Not mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to pick this quarter okay. up and suddenly... So true anarchy. Yeah. You know, the, the intention of bringing something down is going to be there. Something like a government organization and... Feed from Dennis oh, case. Or... Yeah, well, preferably government or an actual tyrannical group, because I would like to avoid the whole, you know, like, oh, it's the corporations, even yeah. though, even though in Western society that seems to be more the thing, yes. Okay. So. But V for Vendetta is an excellent, like, it, it is, it is the archetype yes. to follow. Okay. Tyrannical organization, person willing to literally sacrifice anything to stop them and their ways. I mean, heck, the the group hides behind the cross. They hide behind religion as a means of bringing forth their own corrupt right. view well, of controlling in that case. society. Okay, so number one is V for... or, you know, number ten, I should say. The first one, number ten, is V for Vendetta. Uh, what's number nine? Number nine would actually be PCU. Never heard of it. Okay, see... I'm not the movie buff. He is. So I'm going to let you do most of the talking tonight. See, if anything... If there's any place that's more chaotic and... Promoting an anarchist movement... Anywhere in American society... It would actually be the modern college campus. But when it came to PCU... It was actually a toss-up between this and... And, um... Animal House by National Lampoon. Yeah. But where Animal House, it was more... Wait, PC as in political correctness? <laughs> yes and no. I'll, I'll get into that in a sec. Where Animal House was just, you know, a bunch of guys technically fighting the system, they weren't necessarily... They were doing, a bunch of dumbasses. They, they, they weren't doing it for change. Where in PCU, which in the movie it's Port Chester University, they are battling the what at one time was just considered 90 stereotypes of the womenist movement at the time and the super vegans and things like that. And how would they do this? Well, to protest the womenist movements, they formed a band called Everyone Gets Laid. Uh, with the super vegans, they pelted them with meat 
I'm yeah. noticing a trend between this and your Harley's review. <laughs> yeah, you you would think so. It it appears Which, as though we apologize if you actually sat through all 45 minutes of that. I'm here to moderate him and try and keep him on task a little better. Everyone's a critic. I am. <laughs> but the whole concept behind it is what starts off as just innocent fun. They end up taking their antics straight to the top. A real Reaganite type. And the two facing off in this movie, Jeremy Piven and David Spade, of all people. I know exactly half of those. Yeah. So, once again, no matter what, I was picking a college film that had SNL alumni in it, but instead of John Belushi, you get David Spade. All right. Well, what is next? What's number eight? Well... Not all anarchy is good anarchy. You go to the Mohawk at least once every Sunday, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But this next one is Bebe's Kids. Yeah, it was an animated film based on the comedy of Robin Harris, who was going to be the next Eddie Murphy. Animated. I have never heard of it. I'm usually more... The person who likes animated movies and watches them. So. Oh, you would probably hate this one. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, lots of bad stereotypes, but at least no calf is... No golden calf isn't melted I, in I this. I like that, actually. What? Really bad stereotypes, like, to the point where it's laughable. Yeah, no. Is Tone it? Loke does the voice of the baby in this. And for those of you who don't know who Tone Loke was... He was a famous rapper in the late 80s, early 90s. Look up the song Wild Thang, T-H-A-N-G. And his big claim to fame was, of course, he had a super, super deep voice, and it, it just um, worked. Of course. Oh, yeah. Ha, huh, it's a baby with a super deep voice. Oh, yeah. So, of course, uh. so, of course, the anarchist movement in this is, once again, more indirect, until it becomes personal. But, Bebe's kids do end up completely destroying the not Disneyland of the movie and forming a revolution with the fellow kids who refuse to no longer be spoon fed what type of entertainment they should be vowing for. So it's a super subversive Rugrats. Oh, the, the, the Rugrats come off as Shakespeare compared to this. Okay. Well. So. I mean, Titus, but still Shakespeare. Alrighty. <laughs> so, we moving on then? What's oh, the, yeah. uh, next? Well, with every, seven. with every anarchist movement, at some point or another, it all pretty much started with the Romans, and what did the Romans always love? Uh, Death matches. Oh, okay. I, never mind what I was thinking. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> you fucking perv. Death Race 2000. Starring, oh, I've seen this one. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I dragged you to it. Got to see a 35mm copy of it. Oh, it was it. beautiful. Yeah. Again, plugging the Alamo Draft House here downtown Austin. They do Weird Wednesdays and Terror Tuesdays, and it's good stuff. Check it out yeah. if you live in Austin. Anyway, even Death if, Race 2000. Yeah, this even, one was fun. Even if you're visiting. But, yeah. Death Race 2000, the whole concept is, unlike all these others, you know, we could have done Battle Royale or, you know, the god-awful uh, Hunger Games series or any of those I others. I like Hunger Games. They're actually pretty good, but, yes. Most of those, it's either one individual bankrolling the whole thing or it's a criminal organization or something like that. This, the government actually sets it up as a means of A, thinning the herd, B, calming the masses down so that they don't revolt, and C, to just sate their own appetite for bloodlust. Plus, there's a wonderful scene where they're wheeling the old people out and... Oh, it's Euthanasia Day! Oh, it, it, yes, yes. I love it. Euthanasia Day was a great moment in that film. And a young Sylvester Stallone playing Machine Gun Joe. And he doesn't phone it in. In fact, he's clearly enjoying everything about this. This might have been where he got his Rambo scream from. Because he just cocks this big old Thompson and just... With his jaw slacking off to the side and everything. And David Carradine, just his very... It's proto-Bill, for those of you who know him from Kill Bill fame. All right, well, moving on, number six. 
Well, um, I would say that one would have to be Aeon Flux, brought to us by Charlize Theron. The movie? Yes, yes. Isn't, the, isn't it um, widely panned? I, I really love the animated series that used to air on MTV, but I heard the movie wasn't... I, I hear a lot of bad things about the movie. It's it's, it's all well, right. It's well, not the great, down not bad, the downside is a lot of people keep forgetting that the original animated series was completely disjointed and based off of a series of shorts that well, had no narration or dialogue. It was all based on body yeah. movement. It was done in the more French animated. Yeah, fashion. the first the first half does, and the second half kind of has a little more continuity and well voices. Well, yeah, when when they. It became a legitimate series, yeah. So, having a consistent plot is what makes this a tricky film. Because on the surface, you could think, oh, it's just another one of those. But if you really look at it, visually, it's amazing in several different interpretations. And uh, some of the artistic approaches, wonderful. Charlize doesn't phone it in. And a lot of the character designs are there. I wish they'd gotten someone someone else to play Trevor Goodchild, but I well, don't cast. All told, though, if if the movie isn't really your bag, watch the series. It is fantastic. Also fits. I mean, this is a list of movies, but you know that works. Oh, but um, what are we on? Number five? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have one. If you don't mind me uh, saying, um, so a movie you're here. where a yeah. band, like a person or a band of rebels goes against a corrupt government leader through the use of sheer anarchy and chaos, the Lego movie. Like, what? Yeah. Um, the, Emmett, the, the Lego movie. Yeah, Emmett, a regular guy, joins a band of freedom fighters to go against Lord Business using the powers of well, creativity, but chaos. Creativity in this case means instead of making a spaceship, you're going to make a pirate spaceship or a retro 80s spaceship thing. Just craziness. And they use this pure, crazy, zany anarchy to overthrow Lord Business's plan, his regimen, and save the day. It is interesting because it does leave the end of the series with or end of the show with a little bit of a weird, like, I don't know where I'm going with this. The point is, it's, that, that, that does make, you know that, that makes sense. You can probably it better than I can. No, that, no that, that actually makes a lot of sense. And in a list like this, that in itself is throwing a little bit of anarchy into what could be a possible, like, constructed form. I know, I mean, it's not like I know a whole lot about Legos and... Uh, <laughs> talk what I love, talk what I know. <laughs> but, alright, so, number four? Yeah, th this one is more or less a spirit animal, as much as anything else. Okay, what is it? Batman The Dark Knight Returns. We're talking the animated, and I'm talking the oh. full collection. Brought oh. to us by Frank Miller, and voiced by... Peter Weller. Yes. The oh, original... I thought you were talking the uh, the movies, the early, mid-2000s, Dark Knight. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the good one. Okay. Because it, I mean, once again, it, it pretty much sums it up. Batman what? has always been an anarchist, if you think about it. Mm. Th think of how corrupt the, the Gotham Police Department's supposed to be, apparently. That everyone's on the take on one level or another. So to bring in someone who is indiscriminate, mm -hmm. fears no nobody, and is willing to do almost anything to get the job done, that's Batman. Mm -hmm. And to finally get the government to go, this guy is an actual threat. That is when... They call in the only one that can get the job done. That's Superman. Go on. Oh, no. I'm not defending Snyder at all. Oh, well, I haven't even seen Batman vs. Superman. I just don't like Superman as a character. He is boring as 
all hell. When done right, it's rare, but it is possible. When done right, Superman can be a great character. In fact, I would love to see them attempt Superman Red Sun at some point. Okay, I'll give you that. So, so that one was Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Oh yeah, both of them. In fact, I believe there's a deluxe edition now, but it's probably only on Blu-ray. Alright, so, Batman, what's next? Well, how about Captain America? Or, let me say, the man that played Captain America. Going up against someone who played the Angel Gabriel facing off against John Constantine. What I mean is Chris Evans and Tilda what Swinton. What are we talking about? Snowpiercer. Future train! Future train! Gotta travel through the snow! This is an embodiment of anarchy through true revolution. I love this. And the best part is the quote-unquote government tries to shrug everything off, even though there's evidence that, dude, they're making a difference. They're getting people to team up with them. They're revolting. The government, or the conductor in this, oh, no, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're doing just fine. Everything is going to be taken care of shortly. What I love about this movie is that it takes a completely insane sci-fi original series level premise and actually more or less plays it straight. And does it well. I mean, this the is world a... is over. Humanity is on a train. That, that's, that's it. That's the premise. A giant future train traveling around Noah's Ark style with humanity on it. Honestly, people, it's ridiculous, but if you want to see humanity tested, loyalties rise and fall like the sun, Snowpiercer is one of those movies. I highly recommend it, actually. Don't let the premise put you off. It's a good movie. All right. So what are we on? Two? We're at, we're at two. two. So we're at this movie. Go on. What so, is the one thing that any true force controls above anything else? More than commerce, more than religion, more than entertainment, more than, you know, your, your daily routine. Hmm. Breathing. Exactly, actually. Oh. Wait, so really? The film Wanted. A group of assassins are given targets throughout the world. These targets are actually very influential individuals, whether it be in commerce, whether it be, you know, whether they be you know, five-star generals, politicians, you know, that one respected journalist, sports athletes with their own motivations. These assassins are called in to stop that problem. Mm-hmm. Go on. And for the longest time, they followed one specific code. Adhere to the tapestry. What that means is, you know what, no. I'm going to leave that as vague as possible. But this is the first time James McAvoy really got to showcase himself on screens. The man that would soon become Professor Xavier gets to square off against Angelina Jolie and Morgan Freeman acting-wise. And a young Chris Pratt before he decided to actually do a couple of crunches is in the movie, too. So he makes a return to this list after oh. the Lego movie. <laughs> oh, fun. Alrighty, so... Well, we got? Be okay. before we get to number one, let's get some honorable mentions out of the way. Okay. First off, I would like to say this one's a cross between Equilibrium and Ultraviolet, because it's the same movie. <laughs> Where in Equilibrium, really? oh, yeah, emotions are okay. suppressed, and you know, once you become emotional, you apparently become a super killer, which is interesting because Christian Bale's character is a super killer before he becomes emotional. Now, if you do a slight tweaking... You can get a totally different story out of that, because in the future, again, 
So there is a virus, quote unquote, virus that sharpens an individual's teeth, heightens their healing factor to an extent, and their blood becomes infectious. Blah! But no, it's not Underworld. Like I said, we're talking about none other than Ultraviolet. Okay. So what else do we have on our honorable mentions? Oh, uh, I mean, I'll, obviously, we definitely considered Star Wars, but figured two played out and we don't want to... Well, not just that, but by that time it's a full-on war. It's not... Yeah. It, even though it, there's a plucky band of rebels, they're a full-on military unit at this point. We're talking true anarchy as in, like, very simple rebellion, you know, bows and arrows against machine guns type of stuff. Well, there are certain aspects in Star Wars. Um, the Ewoks and that kind of thing. Yeah, but they, they're, but they're, yeah, they're, in, they're protecting in, their thing. So also, again, they were innocents roped into it. It's not like the Ewoks were a part of the rebellion to begin with. Point is, we didn't include Star Wars because it didn't quite fit into the list. Yeah, yeah, who'd have Even thought? Though, yeah, despite the fact that you can probably shoehorn Star Wars into any list of ten or five or if you're really kind of in a weird mood, 14? Yeah. Anyway, so, mm. we got any more, uh... Oh, uh, well, another one, I know I talked a little bit about Battle Royale earlier, but Battle Royale 2 Requiem actually fits more into this than the original, where Battle Royale, it was more a population control type of thing, yeah. and to set an example, to follow the rules, or your name could be on the list next. Battle Royale 2 actually has survivors from previous games, because remember, if you know anything about Battle Royale, there's always a survivor at the end of each one. They finally got together, got their shit together, and said, you know what, fuck this place. You people need to be stopped. And that's what they mm -hmm. attempt. So. So are we finally ready for number one? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Criteria, it's a movie where people are fighting for a cause in order to bring down the establishment. Three guesses, knowing Ian here, what it is, but I'll let you say it, because I honestly do not know what you... I know what he picked, but... I'll, 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 give, I'll, I'll give the tagline. Mischief, mayhem, soap. Mischief managed. You're in Harry Potter, right? Fight Club! Oh. Okay. I mean, what, what else would it be? Especially, you know, the embodiment of American anarchy. We may not always agree with our country. We may we'll not always... Fight for it. We may not always agree with those in charge. We'll fight them! But I'm telling you right now, Starbucks, you can go fuck yourself. I'm gonna fight a building! No, th this, this is the ultimate environment. I'm being Ian right now. And the funniest thing about all of it is how sweetly ironic it became. Where it was this anti-consumerism story turned into a four-star Hollywood blockbuster with numerous levels of product placement. You know, T-shirts, posters, a video game, and we'll get to that! I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it it just has to be here because if there's anything more American than this, I haven't met it yet. Also, we're going to avoid spoiling anything too big with that because one of the big things about the movie Fight Club is that you don't talk about it. I know that's one of the taglines in the movie, but it's also a good explanation of the movie because... It definitely throws some crazy curveballs out of left field and slam dunks them into the end zone. Sports. <laughs> I, I will say it's one of the few Helen and Bottom Carter movies I've seen that does not have Tim Burton tagged to it. Is Johnny Depp in it? Nope. Although there is a scene where she is letting out some very realistic vocalizing, and I would assume she probably had Johnny on speed dial for that. All right, well, that's our list. I'm Ian Torch. I'm 
again. Happy Guy Fox Day. Eh, I'm gonna go light a fire. I'm gonna light something. Alright. I don't know what I was implying by that. Like, my question is, like, why do they have breathing respirators? They're turtles. Can't they breathe underwater? No. Turtles don't have gills. Oh. This, however, is awesome. It really is. The, the, the turtle sub. I have no regrets on my $15 well spent. <laughs> Indeed, yes. It's a shame they've never done that with the Ninja Turtles miniseries for, like, Halloween or whatever. Hmm. Like, have a creature that hunts for Krangs and he's very zombie-like. Oh, just Krangs. Krang yeah, Krangs instead of brains.